There she is once again. Ex-wives keep cropping up on me. Oh, you've got more that you talk to? Well, no. Let's see here. Do I tell? Let's see. I don't talk to my first ex-wife. I don't know if she's even still alive. My second ex-wife, of course, was you. Well, excuse yes. me, you. And then Susan, I talk to upon occasion. Upon occasion, and I hardly ever talk to my current wife. So uh, <laughs> she's just right next to the other room. Right? <laughs> so you know. So how are you, Ronnie Bennett? I'm okay. How about you? Yeah, how's everything in the world of uh, of old people? Because that's who you write for and uh, do a very good service to. Uh, um, I just finished writing a piece for Wednesday about mm -hmm. the coronavirus and old people mm -hmm. because old people are more vulnerable mm -hmm. people and people with compromised immune systems. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's there's there's no vaccine for it. And but but we all know I just wanted to repeat it for everybody and remind them we all know what to do about washing your hands and yeah. all this other stuff, you know. Yeah. Well, there Did you read about I also included this at the end just for fun, that China in Wuhan where the virus first expressed itself, mm -hmm. they built a one thousand bed hospital in 10 days yeah i know i've seen it but operating it's kind of like days. they're kind of like they're 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 uh, prefab like blocks uh, you know uh, but, but i mean doesn't matter still the point it, it, and there was some video of of workers there were it took seven thousand workers mm -hmm. and there was some video of them in big boots up to their knees standing with in concrete, getting concrete spread, you know, with, with standing in it up to about their mid calves. But you see, here's the reason: in China, they get stuff done because only one guy has to say, "Do it." Right? <laughs> well, if we had know. to build the same thing here, it would have to go through Congress, and everybody would be dead before they laid the first. So, are uh, you lobbying concrete. for um, uh, an autocracy? Uh, no, I'm not lobbying for it, but I'm just saying things get done. Yeah. You know, I mean, look look at the uh, the change in China in just the last 20 years. I mean, Beijing 20, 25 years ago was nothing but dirt roads, okay? And now it is a big, modern, metropolitan oh, city. But, it, but there are, what, two or three dozen other cities the same size? Yeah. I mean, what, what I think is amazing is I can't imagine what it takes to feed that many people. Oh, it's amazing. It's amazing. And getting them from point A to all the point Bs the food needs to go to. Well, you do remember those periods of time we heard about in China with famine, for instance. Yes, yes. yes. So, but I'm not talking about famine right now. I'm talking about feeding everybody, yeah, which is... Yeah. Um, and it's... I don't know. I mean, at any time... Gee, I just wanted to talk about what they did with this hotel and how they do food... And all you've got is the downside of it. No, no. The upside of it is, is that uh, number one, the reason what, how they feed everybody in China is there are over five thousand Kentucky Fried Chicken places there. Oh, you know, that's not really <laughs> the point. But okay. Yum Brands. That's their biggest market. They built something yeah, like. Yeah, but you know that isn't. I'm that just. Isn't... I'm saying that as a joke about how they feed people. Okay. Eventually, it'll kill them all because it's killing us. Okay, so I don't. What what food was it you mentioned? Uh, uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken. I haven't been to a fast food place 25, 30, 40 years. I wish I haven't I had a bite of any of that stuff. Uh, if it were up to Marjorie, we wouldn't ever go to a fast food place. But I introduced her to a fast food place, and every now and then she says, "Go get me some." And Go get me some what? Popeye's chicken. It is terrific. It's probably as greasy as Kentucky Fried uh, Chicken. Uh, but much better. Much better. Well, not my thing. Yeah, but yeah. She, she but she's fallen in love with that. But that's the only fast food I can even remember her ever eating. Let me turn on my light back here. There we go. Uh, well, just say on air. Oh, you've got to have the on air light. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm not officially on the air. Um <laughs> But no, I was amazed at the, the one thing I feel bad about is when I was in China, we, one night we went out to go eat and we were looking for a place to eat and there was a Kentucky fried chicken 
And we didn't go in there because I, and no, well, wait a minute. We I, we really should have because they it isn't just chicken. They have like uh, what is it? I think they have uh, uh, something that's very Chinese, uh, like geese or something like that. Uh, in those in those places, they have a different fare. Why would you go to a place with their own cuisine and eat American? But that isn't a, the stuff in there. Isn't all American? As I said, they do things like I guess duck. Duck is what they have in there. Yeah. You can get better duck in other Chinese Oh, well, I went and I got Beijing duck. I got Beijing duck uh, in Beijing at the best Beijing duck place ever there. It's, it takes them like four days to make the damn thing. They do in Chinatown in New York, too. It yeah. takes four days. Yeah, yeah. Really. I, uh, I, I don't need to go anywhere to get good duck. Because I, I can't. I, I, yeah. What I had in over, you know, 40 years in New York City, Chinatown, was just sensational. Oh, you're going to you're going to tell me the Chinatown, American Chinatown, can make better duck than a restaurant in Beijing. I don't know, but it was really. really <laughs> I got good news for you. Know where to go? This was. And I don't think that. I mean, just like fried chicken in America at any fast food places, you know, you could throw up from it, just because it's, you know, it, it it's done in the place where it was invented doesn't make it wonderful necessarily yeah well i'm all i'm saying is that uh like we went into a chain we went into a couple of chinese restaurants and we went into one one night because we we had just gotten into town and we just needed to eat so we went to their this uh, shopping area and there we went into this restaurant and there was nothing on the menu that even looked remotely like anything we had ever had in the United States. I mean, I would have thought I could go in there and go, oh, give me the egg foo young, give me the egg roll. No. Egg foo young is not Chinese. That's I American. Know. I, egg rolls are, they don't have egg rolls either. You know, uh, amazing. Just amazing. Um, also in China, this will you'll like this. Uh, 7-Eleven, which is famous for one major thing, and that's their Slurpees, the drink Slurpee, the ice drink. They don't, don't have they don't have them in 7-Elevens there because the Chinese don't like ice. Neither do Europeans. Yeah, they. In fact, we started off one of our meals with a glass of warm water because uh, that's supposedly good for you. And? and it warms you up and gets you ready for the meal. They think if you drink ice, it uh, it does something bad to your system. I agree. Mm -hmm. So I, I never drink ice in anything. Really? I no. Do I do ice and stuff anymore? If somebody puts ice in a drink, I'll drink the drink, I don't, but I don't necessarily ask for it with ice. I just like it cold, so I'll put it in the refrigerator, you know. Yeah, um, whenever they bring me water in restaurants. I always make them take it back and take out the ice. <laughs> <laughs> because it's it hurts. It hurts my mouth Does to it, drink it, something that it, cold. Really? Really? Son yeah. Oh, oh, what the hell? Um, I also don't like bubbly drinks for the same reason. They really hurt. I love maybe it's just your system. I love bubbly drinks. I love carbonation. It I, uh, you know it's the gift of the gods, so far as I'm concerned. Plus, it makes you belch, you know. No, no. well, I don't know that belching. <laughs> I don't know that belching's bad for you, you know. Well, you kind of maybe don't want to do it in public. Well, I've been known to, <laughs> you know. But anyway, um... <laughs> I'm I'm stifling a comment. I... <laughs> It, ever, even in our marriage, folks, and ever since, she's always been rather amused by my grossness. Yes, well, I don't know that it's amusement. I, I, I know that you're a lady of, 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 of nice things and of, of uh, pleasantries and so on, but occasionally a uh, good belch and a good fart isn't a bad thing, you know? Just not in public. Just not in public, no. no. In the bedroom... No. Anyway, look. So, uh, anyway, how have you been? In other words, how is how we haven't asked you about your health lately? And well, e I graduated from pulmonary rehab school. Oh, do you get a little diploma? Do you want to see it? Really? Yes. Hold on. Oh, I'll be right on. back. Wait a minute. Right we're gonna. Here. 
they give her a diploma at pulmonary uh, rehab school. I wonder if they, they're going to do something for me when I'm through with my radiation. I don't know. I know that when they used to have like the two months of radiation, some places actually, you're upside down. Oh. <laughs> you rang a, they rang a bell for you. A certificate of achievement is awarded to Ronnie Bennett for successful completion of pulmonary rehabilitation program. Very yep. nice. Notice the date at the bottom. 12819. Well, what's wrong with the date? This is 2020. Oh, 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 oh. They forgot to change their form. Son of a bitch. It's okay. Not a problem. It's okay. Now, uh, now so what, what, what I can, finished yeah. that. Yeah, what can you do with that? Is What can you do with that diploma? Can you get a job with it? I can do that. Well, let me tell you a story. Yeah. Um, before I left there, there are all these different kinds of exercises and breathing and workouts that we've done. And it really, as I mentioned, I think on the show in the past, mm -hmm. it's really made a difference in my breathing. Mm -hmm. Huge, huge difference. Yeah. I won't ever be running after the bus in my life again. And I do have to walk slower. You know, I couldn't, it, I used to have to stop two or three times to go to the mailbox or the trash mm -hmm. just to get my breath. Mm -hmm. Now, as long as I don't walk New York City style pace really fast, mm -hmm. I can get there and back without stopping and all kinds of things like that. Yeah. So I put together a routine of what I could do to keep up the exercises because if I don't, I will lose the gains that I've made. And I've got to tell you that. Fear is a great motivator for me. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and so I did that and I took it in and met with a couple of the nurses and they fixed it up. They thought what I should do. And we got all that done before I had my last class. <laughs> and I've been refining it here at home since last week. And here's what happened to me. Two and a half years ago, when I sat in a room with three doctors, and they told me I had pancreatic cancer. Yeah. Um, which is fairly startling. Right. My first reaction was, and I said it out loud, well, I've just done my last exercise session tonight. <laughs> <this morning. laughs> I've done it for years and years and years because... I needed to, and it's good for me, and I every moment of it, I'm just not the type. And still, I did it, and because I was in such good shape, they could do the Whipple surgery. If I hadn't been in such good physical shape, they would not have done it at my age. And so I was lucky to have been doing that for seven or eight years by the time that happened to me. But I meant it when I swore that that was it. You tell me I have pancreatic cancer, I am not exercising anymore. Wow. Well, here I am. Here you are exercising. <laughs> Every morning, 40 minutes of this stuff. <laughs> uh, so you can't even keep what I thought was a deathbed declaration. <laughs> wow. Wow. Oh, boy. Okay. I listen, by the way, everybody, she's out of sync again. We'll live with it, you know. Okay. Yeah. All right. So you don't know how to fix that. No, let's not even go there. Let's let it go. Do sorry. At, what, at the up. beginning of the interview, we didn't. You weren't out of sync, and then all of a sudden, I just noticed you were out of sync, and I tried to fix it, but there's, I can't figure out how to fix it. So, we'll live with it because I'm, I'm in sync, and that's all that matters. <laughs> anyway, so, uh, it, 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 um, Marjorie has a slight case of COPD. In fact, um, um, she. You know, it's 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 not like yours, okay? And the, her doctor... Do you see me heaving for air? <laughs> yeah, her doctor said it was caused by her years of smoking. Now yeah, that she, can be a cause, but that's not the only cause. But she quit longer than I have, you know, and I'm like 35 and years, 36 years after smoking. But it's not the only thing. Yeah. I mean, there are many things that causes, not the least of which the general idea is bad air, breathing bad air. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so it can be many causes. Um, and, you know, smoking is the easy one to say because when people talk about it because it's been so demonized, as I suppose it should be, but they've made it such a 
what's the word, a bugaboo. Yeah. Um, that um, it it takes the weight for anything that goes wrong with people, and I'm not, sh- and and it certainly causes lots of terrible things, including, I mean, not just COPD, but heart disease and all kinds of stuff. Right. But um, it can be a combination of mm-hmm. things. It could be something else. It doesn't doesn't. It, it's not set in stone. It's that's you know. Med- I, I'm learning through my intimate knowledge or, or frequent knowledge, if not intimate, of mm-hmm. the medical profession these days that mm-hmm. um, uh, it's as, almost as much an art as a science. Mm-hmm. So there are lots of things that can't be said definitively, but that we know is the generally good idea, like don't smoke. Right, right. Well, I, you know, I hear about people smoking and I and or see people smoking, and I just want to say to them, don't do it. It's just... You know, I mean, when I quit, that was, I think that was one of the most important decisions I made in my life, you know, and the hardest one to accomplish. I remember you and I quit smoking once, and then we, about four weeks later, we started smoking again. I mean, we, we felt, oh, well, we don't need a cigarette now. Let's just try one, and the next thing we knew, we were smoking again. Well, that's what addictions do, you yeah. know. And, um, and it was, I was yeah. when I quit for good... I had I went to bed for four days and I cried for four days and I ached and I hurt and I cried and I didn't sleep for four days. It was if you don't count the Whipple surgery, mm-hmm. it's the hardest thing I ever did. Yeah, yeah. Uh, nothing harder except recovering from Whipple. <laughs> on the other hand, I found it was easier than I thought it was going to be. Well, maybe you, some people smoke who aren't addicted. I had a friend for years. We would, a couple times a week, go out for a drink together after work. And on our way to a bar, she would buy a pack of cigarettes and she would smoke at the bar. And then she'd leave them there when she left. She only smoked when she had a drink. Well, I'll tell you something. Of course, you remember Abby Hoffman, who was a clinical psychologist. Mm-hmm. And uh, in interviewing him once back in San Francisco... Um, we started talking about addiction, and we were talking about smoking. And I said, I quit, and it was pretty easy for me. I mean, I did uh, some Bantron, I think, which was a a nicotine substitute for just a couple of days, and then I just never smoked again. I said, on the other hand, I know other people who try to quit, and they've tried any number of times, and they can't quit. I said, What's the difference between them and me? And he said, there's a difference between addiction and habituation. <clears throat> and you mm-hmm. were habituated. No, that's not, a, yeah. I mean, that's well known. Yeah, You're, you were habituated and she was addicted. Okay? And, and that made sense to me. Absolutely made sense to me. Uh, and I think I was always habituated to smoking but never addicted to it. I think I've been habituated to a couple of things in my lifetime, but never addicted. I remember when I was doing cocaine, okay? Uh, I really was habituated and not addicted because when I quit, there were no withdrawal symptoms, you know, and I I quit, and I quit for good, and that was it. But my father was the same way. My father, remember, he used to drink. He was a musician. He was out playing with bands. Uh, Every guy would come along and say, buy the band a drink, and they would by the end of the night, they'd be snockered, right? My father one day found that he, he could hold his liquor, but he found the day came when he couldn't any longer, and he just said, I quit, and he just stopped. But he wasn't addicted. He had a drink now. Right, but he was quite a drinker while he was a drinker, you know? That's not the same as being addicted. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. I think, and I think that we, we uh, not enough times do we, we always try and treat things like they're an addiction. I mean, I think that, uh, I think Alcoholics Anonymous is a wonderful organization, but it doesn't necessarily solve every problem because everybody's different and everybody has to approach it differently. And, uh, you yeah, know, anyway, my father just quit. I was amazed. I, I had, and he, he smoked. And he, one day he just said, I don't want to smoke anymore. He quit smoking. You know, my mother always thought she smoked, but she didn't. She would always puff on the cigarette, but she'd never inhale it. And she'd go, I got to quit these things. And I'm going, Mom, all you got to do is put it down. You're not, you're not inhaling it. 
yeah. What was cool about your dad mm -hmm. is that was everything. Yeah. Was when there were people at the house, mm -hmm. and he was making drinks, serving drinks, and all of that stuff. Nobody ever noticed that he didn't drink. Yeah. And he made a point of that, of, of behaving in such a way that nobody noticed. Yeah, yeah. And it was amazing that he quit drinking and could still make drinks for other people. But he wasn't addicted, so it didn't matter. Do you remember drinking in those days? Because what I remember about my parents is they would come home from, my mother would come home from work, and my father would come home from, he was in real estate at that time from work, and he would just, they would, all, they would have a drink when they came home. It was just, you know. People a, do that all the time. They a, still do. <laughs> I don't know. Do people still do that? Yes. Or do they light up a joint? No. No? People still come home. I mean, certainly some people do. But, um, but people still do that. They come home from work and make a drink. You know what? I've never been able to figure out. Just because you don't do things, Alex. Yeah. You, you really can't think that the rest of the world behaves the same way. Well, no, but I, it, it's kind of interesting, but I find it difficult to understand why I have never, ever liked alcohol. Never. I mean, you know, or an occasional drink now and then. You no. Know, I don't, I don't like eggplant. Yeah. I don't really care to know why. No. <laughs> I, th I think because in a proper, decent world, everyone would hate eggplant <laughs> you know see i'm sorry i do because there's such wonderful ways of cooking it really so I'm sorry but i can't i can't i don't like the taste but i also can't stand the smell of it cooking so <laughs> i don't know i most i can eat almost anything yeah. except eggplant yeah so i mean you know i i i just uh i've, I've never been i you know i've never been i don't think i've ever been addictive an addictive personality at all. Uh, even though I've had, you know, been doing stuff for a long, a while, you know, smoking cigarettes, so on. Sm cigarettes were the hardest ones to quit because you, you, you are, um, it's almost more pervasive and horrible than almost any other kind of addiction. I, you know, I think it's even worse probably than alcoholism to, to kick. Um, Scientists, couple of scientists I used to know, mm -hmm. have told me, and I've seen it in articles. Mm -hmm. I don't know the provenance of the articles um, that cigarettes are a stronger addiction by by magnitudes than heroin. Wow! That make it harder to quit than heroin. Wow! 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 wow. Oh, I don't well. know anything about heroin, so I can't tell you. Yeah, well, I remember you were quite a smoker. You, you. We were both. I you, miss you, to this day. Really? There are times I'm sitting here typing away. You know, and, oh, I need to think. I would like to have I mean, a cigarette. I'm, I'm, to I'm, I'll make you feel real guilty. You know, you're the one who started me smoking. You always tell me that. You know, yeah. I, as though you're not an independent human being. I well, I. <laughs> well, I mean, I was wanted to impress my my girlfriend. You know, and you were smoking, and you were smoking, I think at that time, Newports. So I started smoking Newports. <laughs> yeah, you did. And I started smoking Newports, and I was really into it. I not only had the Newports, but I got myself a Newport lighter, you know, so I, so I matched with the whole thing. And that's how I started. Was you, uh, you saying, here, you want to try something? Sorry about that. Well, you know, if I, if I was dying of lung cancer right now, I'd blame it on you. By the way, just quickly, what do you think about Rush Limbaugh having lung cancer? Stage well, four. For a lot of people who smoke, that happens. Yep, he did smoke for a long time, and they quit and went to cigars, which is not much better. Quitting doesn't change the damage. Yeah, yeah. Um, I get I get such a visual response from people. Oh, good. I hope he dies slowly. You know, they they because they they mix the. Persona of the radio guy with the, the actual guy. And I always appreciated Rush Limbaugh as a talent. Okay, I didn't I, agree with his politics, but I, I liked his, I appreciated his. I think he was very good at his job. Oh, I thought he was. I thought he was excellent. But that's, you know, me, uh, <coughs> you know, looking at another person in the business who does not what I do exactly, but 
Well, that's me as a producer looking at somebody. Well, you producers are different. You're always nagging us anyway. So, you know, you're always... You're always... Weren't us, nothing good would happen to you guys on the air. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, yeah. No, actually, you're right. You're right. Because I had a producer, uh, Albert Reynoso, my last producer, the one at Sirius XM, who was so good. He made me look great. You know, mm -hmm. he made me look great. Yeah. You know? Uh, I've had to do that with a number of television hosts who weren't <laughs> capable. Yeah, we won't <laughs> say who. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, so uh, are you going to watch the State of the Union address tonight? Well, Today is well, Tuesday. Well, this will probably, I'm not doing a show on Tuesday, so this will probably run on Wednesday. So I really, I thought he was an asshole last night when he did the State of the Union address. I think oh, I, it, stop it. I can safely this, say that. <laughs> this is Tuesday. He's yeah. doing it tonight mm -hmm. after we've recorded this. Yes, right. So I'm I'm acting like what I think I will say anyway. Yeah. And then there were the what do they call them? Caucuses in Iowa yeah. Monday. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Well that I <laughs> What a that cluster what a cluster anywhere, what a cluster fuck that was. <laughs> um, I, um, uh, you know, I went to the Iowa caucuses a few years back, and I was impressed by them, oddly enough, because it, it's really homespun politics. You know, people get into a room and they convince each other that they should go with their candidate. And it, it's really a wonderful process. Uh, and I'm sorry to see it have, have fall, uh, to have fallen into such disrespect uh, because of this... Uh, error of judgment and using apps and things like that. Don't you think yeah. that something like it's no more than 14 hours since it was going last night, uh, that it's a little soon to talk about respect or not, disrepute or not? Well, they're already talking about we got to get rid of it. we got to get rid of the caucuses. Well, some are. Others yeah. aren't. You know, I think the caucuses, as I said, I, what I saw was a great American process that I really, I really was awed by when I saw it going on. Because it was really grassroots politics. It was like, you well, go anybody out... anybody can see it on television. Yeah. And, um, you know, I don't really care. But to be the there and, to, and, and to get that feeling that these people are in this room doing a process which actually their vote counts... You know, I mean, it doesn't actually, count for anything. It doesn't get anybody elected. Well, it 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 counts in that you're there. That you know, they don't just do this for the presidential elections. They also do this for like state elections and as about well. About one half of one percent of the people of the state participate. Well, and that's the yeah. problem with the rest of them. You know, but anyway, I just yeah, I just thought I'd throw that in. Hey, you know, we've uh, we've kind of run out of time here. We've actually run more than out of time. What? Yeah. We've done the 28 minutes already. You ready for that? See how time flies when you're having fun with it? I wrote about this this week. Yeah. That there's not like I every Saturday I count out pills into the two little boxes, you yeah. know, that so I'll have them for the week. Mm -hmm. And it takes about five minutes. Well, a little while back, you know, I, it, it's really boring, by the way. Oh. It is really boring. I do a whole it. month. I do a whole month. Well, I'm telling my story right now. Yeah. And um, and so I, a couple of Saturdays ago, you know, I stood there in the kitchen going through them all, putting them in the right little boxes. And I expected it, as usual, to be about five minutes. And I looked at the clock when I was done, and... 15 minutes or more had gone by. What did I do, black out? And if so, why was I still vertical? I mean, it was, it made no sense. And then I identified some other things that take terribly much longer than I thought it <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I don't understand how being old slows you down counting out pills, but apparently it does. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, we're appealing to an, a crowd uh, that... Uh, well, that is not in what we would call the prime demographic. Uh, um, she's talking about sorting her pills, and I'm arguing with her, you only do a week, I do a month at a time, you know. And uh, I, 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 you know, I just, uh, uh, it's all getting old stuff, you know. You know, tomorrow I have another one of my radiation treatments, you know, yeah, it's fun, it's, you know. 
The worst thing about the radiation treatments, they're boring. Most of that kind of stuff is the people who conduct the tests are actually doing something, so oh, they're yeah. not bored, you yeah, know? Right. But you're just, whenever I have a CT scan or they take blood out of my arm or something, I'm just sitting there while they do their thing. And if it doesn't get over quickly, you're right. It's really boring. Well, we, we, we're really running over, but let's. who gives a shit? Uh, what happens is I've got this machine that's going around me every now and yes. then, and then it stops. And then it's yes. then around me some more, and then it stops. Yes. This went on the first time for about 45 minutes, okay? And mm. then the guy says, all right, we're ready to zap you. Uh, it'll take two minutes. And the thing went, meep, meep. Okay, you're through. And I'm going, what was the rest of the time for? He said, setting it up. <laughs> you know? Oh, yeah, man. Really, I mean, we shouldn't complain. They're miraculous things. Oh, oh, listen, this, this uh, radiation treatments used to take uh, two months <clears throat> of going five days a week. And this, <clears throat> zap, zap, zap. And the only side effects I've had, I'm a little tired and... Uh, I, uh, I, do they tell you that it's from that, or uh, yeah, you no, they, no, sleep no, last no, night? no, they say that that you can have mild fatigue, uh -huh. and and urinary problems, which I have. It, I have to, you know. I really I, don't think we want to discuss those. Well, yeah, no, we don't have to, but you know, but uh, uh, because they're going up uh, anyway. It it uh, I can't I can't even believe it works. Because I don't feel anything. You know, you get a shot, you go, hey, I'm going to get better. I've got some something in me. This, you don't feel a thing. Nothing. Zero. Oh, Zilch. that's cool. Yeah, of course it's cool. It's science fiction. And then he's going to go put the prostate seeds in me after that. And uh, after maybe about uh, a week and a half, the three and a half weeks of one thing and another, I'm good to go. That's it. Problem, That's great. Problem solved, you know, and hopefully it won't come back. So, yes. Whatever. Anyway, hey, listen, what? You, you look like you're. Oh, how season. often do they check you after that's all done? Uh, that I have no idea. I would imagine probably every three months or so. Okay. They probably check my PSA to see how it's doing and, you know, whatever. But, uh, you know, it should, should, in most cases, they say that uh, both being used at the, I'm doing two different courses of things and they say that once you do those uh, your chances are very good that it's about 92 she'll to die of something else I, no I think he said <laughs> yeah he says 92 to 93 percent chance it will not come back you know that it's to be gone so anyway but whatever I said see see what we and talk about hurt and it doesn't leave a scar no scar cool. nothing you know not even uh, it's not even laparoscopic and the other one, I won't tell you how they put the seeds in, but I can uh, guess. But they don't cut. No, they don't go up your butt. They really don't. They they stick a needle in your perineum. Mm, and, I know and, that's and, and, and then they put the seeds in there, and you know you're out for that. So, what the hell? I don't care. Put me out. When does that happen? That'll happen on the 25th of August that I'm going in for that August. Procedure. August of uh, of February. Oh, okay. This yeah. month. All yeah. right. Yeah. On a Sunday, they're doing it. No, no, no. 25th is a... Um... You said 23rd, I think. No, 25th. Right, sir. 25th. So, All right. you know, it's a Tuesday, and uh, it's an in-and-out procedure. So, you know, you don't stay in the hospital or anything, you know. Mm -hmm. And supposedly, according to... I looked at what my doctor writes on his thing, and he says, you can resume your normal activities, even play golf. <laughs> Funny. We, well, we know what's important to him. <laughs> yeah, I want to know why why golf. You know, you can get back. Well, it's the same. I for me, it's the same thing as when news people use sports analogies when they're talking anything else but sports. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't know what you're talking about. You know, you, you know what they're going to have to give me. This is funny. What they're going to have to give me after I had the seeds put in me is a little card saying I've been radiated, that I have seeds in me. So if I want to go take a plane trip, you know, if something goes off because of the radiation, I just show them the card and they understand. Oh, you're liable to set off the metal detectors. Or, or something. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so they... Well, 
There must be lots of men who do that. They, they must be used oh, to Oh, it. yeah, no, they, uh, from what I've read, when I read this thing, it said that every, every, uh, every guy at an airport knows about this. You yeah, know, so. Like people yeah. with a knee, yeah. a man, or hip, or yeah. something. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, right. Oh, you know, I haven't been on an airplane since I had this, where it's somewhere up here, um, this port installed where they put fluids in and take out blood and stuff like yes, that. That's your, your USB port. And I'm, yes, it is, kind of is, yes. And uh, I think, I haven't been on an airplane since then, but I think that it's, yeah. it's plastic, but I think it's got metal in it. It might set off yeah. a, yeah. a indicator. Well, you know? we should both get on an airplane together. We'd really set off a nice musical <laughs> rendition. Hey, look, we got to go. This is, we've gone uh, 35 minutes. Wow. Well, not a record for us. I think 40 was our record. Well, Ladies and gentlemen, that's a little bit out of sync today, but nevertheless, always in sync mentally. Ah, <laughs> trying anyway. <laughs> it, it's Ronnie Bennett. Thank you, Ronnie. I appreciate it. Thank you.